everybody, Blue Dooley and the 53 Hauler has lights and sounds. Programming the sounds took me a little longer than I thought and uh, I had problems with the DX5 Rugged. I guess I could grab it. Trying to get this thing's auxiliary 3 channel to work uh, took quite a while. In fact, it I probably spent close to three hours trying to figure out why that channel wouldn't work and then randomly just pulled the red lot wire out of the servo lead and then it magically worked. Nowhere in the instructions does it say to do that. So yeah, not really thrilled with Spectrum's DX5 Rugged at the moment. The truck, however, super happy with it. There's plenty of room in this cab, under this cab, and underneath this entire hauler bed. You can cram all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, if you don't actually want to put a sound unit in it, there's probably enough room. You could put a small Bluetooth uh, speaker under here if you just want it to thump tunes. Uh, the speaker I have is actually right here underneath the uh, hood. Plenty of room. Everything clears. Uh, the wiring is a little messy, but my wiring usually is. No matter how tidy I try to make it, it just never ends up that way. So there is plenty of room on this truck to put whatever you want in it and uh, hide it pretty good. So we'll plug the battery in, fire it up here in the garage, and we'll run through some functions. And then we'll skip into inside, kind of show how I wired everything up. So Red Cat really kind of went out of the way to make sure this thing could get lights. And I wired up both taillights to each other so the both LEDs are brake and turn and park. And I have it programmed so the brake light's pretty much always on unless it's moving. Then you have amber LEDs down the side. And I don't have the turn signals hooked up, but uh, turn signals, headlights, low beam, and high beam. And then one more click. Turns on the flasher bar. And then that flasher bar will pretty much stay in that pattern when the truck's moving after it sits for a little bit. That'll do the arrows and then the work lights will come on that's just the way i have this set this has uh seven different light modes so it'll have a f brighter flash a scan almost so again setting up this radio is kind of a pain in the ass so i have the lights on this switch here and you tap it to turn them on and then you hold it down Turn each function off. And then it's just a quick tap, oops, sorry, to turn them on. But I don't think we need the light bar going for here. The other way, start stops the engine. This is a generic V8 sound uh, that the sound files came with. This isn't the sound that's gonna actually stay in the truck. Gotta switch your hands here. And it still needs some programming. That backup alarm is set at 30% volume, so still need some tweaks on that. Hold up a Long, you get a horn. Short, on off. 
Now, my biggest problem with the way Red Cat had the servos hooked up is they wanted hydraulics, so they wanted to move up and down really fast. I thought this truck should be bagged, so that took a considerable amount of programming to figure out how to get the sound and the servos to do the same thing at the same time. So now we have this, instead of a quick drop, we got airbags, and then it slowly sets down. and slowly raises up. I kind of need to tweak the sounds a little bit because it's the same sound going up and down. But uh, the sound files are in German. So the only way I could find the sounds is just previewing the sounds. So I don't know if there's a different truck with an actual airbag inflation sound or not. The other cool thing the sound can do is you can put more than just regular sounds in it. <laughs> or since it's a lowrider, and I have, uh, well, wiring's messy. So each side panel has four LEDs in it, and for the ground, or the black wires, I actually have some thin black wire. The orange is a uh, solid wire because I got it by the foot with uh, in a seven strand for sprinkler lines. So this actually carries voltage out to... Uh, your solenoids in your sprinkler system to open and close zones and I have tested all of these LEDs and they work so let me find a place to set you down at here I'll kind of flip the panel over I'm not going to see all of them I don't think because I got a little bit of a mess but I have a 9 volt battery with just a plug, uh, servo plug on it for the moment. So I can test my lights as I go. I'll stick the ground on the ground, maybe. Because of course it's very tiny wire, it frays easily. in the ground. Get this side over here. And there you go. We got uh, amber lights on one side panel. Let's see here. We'll stand. I don't want to get that too close to the uh, soldering iron. The Red Cat actually has clips already installed for the side panels to hold uh, your LEDs in. And the truck does come with uh, screws and more clips. So you can do the entire truck. And they actually really thought it out really well. I'm, uh, I'm pretty surprised. They, did they built this kit or built this truck to make wiring it up with lights easy. So I'm going to wire up the other side here and then uh, I won't show any of that on camera. It's just splicing wires together. The important thing to remember about both the USM RC3 and the SFR-1 is they switch the negative side of the load to turn things on and off. So the Two wires here coming off the ribbon cable. So the white and black 
are always powered. These colored ribbon, the other colors, are what actually connects the positive to ground, and that's what turns the lights on and off and other functions, depending on what you have hooked up to these ribbon cables. So that can be a little tricky at first if you haven't done this before, because I did it backwards and it doesn't work. So yeah, these two wires I'm going to uh, wire up together. And then basically all the positives will come into these two wires. And then the ground will come to these color coded wires. So I'd like to have all the running lights uh, on the toolboxes or on the bedsides will actually be one color. The front turn signals and the rear turn signals will come on with those lights because you can actually set up in the modules that they'll, they do multiple functions. They will be dim when on and then they'll bring, blink brighter when it's turn signal. So the bedsides will probably be brown, then red will be the headlights. Let's say orange will be left turn, green will be right turn, or the, yeah, yellow, I suppose, is uh, right turn. Then green and blue will be both tail lights, stop lights, and turn signals because they can share a function. They'll be dim normally when you're driving down the road and they will both light up brighter when you apply the brakes or they will blink depending on which way you turn. Then you also have two more wires here to run other lights. So the light bar will be on one and all of the underglow that's gonna be on the truck will be on another one. Now, both of them also have more than uh, one output. So you got one through eight and then you got six through 16. So you can actually trigger, again, this one will have two power wires. So if you pick up a second cable, you can run more lights off of one unit. You can run a lot of lights off this thing. So one ribbon cable will run all the lights I currently want. Uh, then like light bars and stuff that plug into, uh, just plug in straight to the receiver, you can plug into here. And then that'll give you uh, servo outputs. I'm not sure if you can just program to come on or if you just actually plug in the two wires you need. I'll have to look into that for a little bit. But this thing has tons of flexibility. So the headlights, I'll just wire together. Uh, both their grounds and power. And then the turn signals, of course, will get their own, which aren't actually in the truck right now. So, a couple more ambers. And I will probably wire all of the cab wires power to uh, together, and then the grounds will just go to their separate corresponding ribbon cable. So I just realized I did make a mistake on my wiring. I wired all four of the Red LEDs together to the same ground, and each pair needs to be its own separate pair. But since everything is hooked up together, we can test it. So all of the positives will be tied together. As I mentioned, the sound module itself switches the negatives on and off. So all of the LEDs are working. I just need to uh, split the taillights for the right and left back to a uh, single ground into a pair of grounds. And I will get the ribbon cable here. So for the turn signals and headlights, the negatives are where they need to be. as I untangle them. So on the headlights and the turn signals, their power wires are wired together. 
and it doesn't matter on the turn signals because they get power from the same cable off this ribbon cable it's their grounds that matter so the two headlights are grounded onto yellow one turn signal is orange and the other turn signal is red so these positives and all the positives of all of the lights on the truck will have to be uh, tied together and then tied to this white and black which I kind of wish they just ran a thicker gauge wire for the white and black since there generally are so many LEDs on a vehicle but that's where we're at right now so I'm going to finish tidying up some wires and connecting grounds correctly since I apparently put a couple together that didn't need to be but that's why it's important to test before you put everything in the truck. Shout out to Tomley RC. I'm watching his video while I'm working on the Red Cat. I got the five channel spectrum receiver ready to go in the truck. I just took out the little four channel Red Cat unit. And uh, it's a little lower profile than this one, but I think that's just the way the cases are set up. Mount the receiver back where it was. I rerouted some of the wires. And I'll tuck that up out of the way. And there's just enough room here. Let me grab it. So we'll be able to set the USM RC 3 right there next to the ESC to plug the lights in. Now, they put an extension wire on this. Oops, let me, let me hold it even here. They actually put a little extension on the uh, ESC battery lead so it'll reach up into the battery box. I'm actually going to cut this connector out and then bring this back over here. We're going to just solder these right to the battery, and then I have a just an automotive switch that I'll put on the negative side of the battery. So this side will actually get soldered in to here, and then I'll just get rid of the splice together. Well, I'll get rid of the plug, and then solder all of these back together with those wires in it. It'll still have plenty of cable to reach back where it needs to reach. And I don't have to worry about that coming unplugged. But let me get the radio gear and the light module kind of stuck down here where it needs to be and get this stuff wired up. I did reroute the motor leads. They had actually zip tied them to this rod. So I just ran it down here to the chassis brace, put two zip ties on it, and that'll keep that out of the way and tidy it up a little bit. I'm pretty sure their light kit's meant to just stick down right here, so... That's what we're planning with. Uh, I haven't actually looked at any directions to see if that's how it works or not, but that's what we're rolling with. Working on getting the USM to talk to the Spectrum Radio is turning out to be a little bit of a chore. And I did not realize that the receiver could actually power this up because I apparently missed that somewhere in this thing's direction. So I didn't actually need to solder power wires into the light kit itself. Getting the USM to talk to the Spectrum receiver so far is being kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, trying to get the menu on the Spectrum uh, rugged is just a pain in the ass. I'll be perfectly honest with you right now. But the servos for the lift are actually working. I can't get the channel to do the delay I want. So it's not jerky. So I need to mess around with some programming some more. Uh, the USM and the, U, uh, the SFR, they're very, very complex units. And getting them programmed to do what you want to do 
if you're not super familiar with them, because this is only the second one I've ever used, uh, it's a bit of a chore. The lights were pretty easy to set up on the Grand Hauler, and I think the lights are going to be easy to set up on this. It's just getting the servos to operate at the speed I want, and then get the sound to kick on with the throttle. That it's taken a little bit of work, so I haven't gotten any more soldering done except for the power wires for everything. And there is a bracket in here <coughs> that a standard automotive switch actually fits in just about perfectly. I might poke two little holes in this switch, and uh, that way I can... Well, I don't even really need it because the receiver is powering the unit, so... Yeah, that was kind of a waste of time soldering that in. The little blue light's blinking, blinking because... We're uploading... Some adjustments to the light and sound control module. And... This video is late because of this... This radio and that sound card. Getting them to work together has been a bit of a chore. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to keep this DX5 rugged. It's been such a pain in the ass to get it. The auxiliary channels... It has three auxiliary channels. To use auxiliary channel three, you have to pull the red wire because auxiliary channel three is also the battery plug for like nitro cars and stuff. And nowhere in the directions does it actually say to use this in an electric vehicle, you need to remove the power lead to channel three. So that's taken me about two hours to figure out because it's not in the directions and a couple of videos I've seen to set up the DX5 rugged and the SR515 receiver. Nobody says that at all. So that's just kind of a giant colossal pain in the ass. Uh, I'm actually kind of pissed about they kind of forgot that small oversight in the directions. But all the lights work. The sounds and stuff all work. The sounds that are currently in it for uh, engine and stuff like that are just in it to uh, kind of demonstrate. Because the speaker... I'm going to tape it in place so we can do a little driving of it uh, and kind of demonstrate what all this thing can do because it can do a lot. But uh, the sounds aren't going to be permanent and neither is the speaker system in this going to be permanent. We're going to go to dual speakers so we can get a little better sound quality out of it. Uh, the sound quality is okay, but uh, for kind of what I want this truck to be, I need a little better speaker in it, and uh, I think two of them in a nice speaker box will give it a little, a little more bass, a little more punch than just a single speaker and kind of an open box. So we're currently 76% uploading a song because you can load songs on this. Uh, it has to be in a specific format and a Actually, it's very picky about the hertz uh, the sound files are at. So, I think I'll cover that kind of stuff in a different video, as uh, this video is already late. But uh, I can actually pull up the Sound Teacher program, and we can go over it a little more in detail later. The wiring is a mess. Uh, I'm just not a very neat wirer. And I didn't trim things as short as they could be because I wanted to leave myself a little length so I can, if I need to move something and reposition things, uh, so that that can be changed. Uh, I am using all eight outputs for lights on this currently. Uh, you can add eight more. So you can have 16 basically light functions on the trucks. <clears throat> But I just need to get all the lights bolted into the cab. And once this is done uploading, we'll take this little cable off because we won't need it anymore. 
We'll get the cab on, get the stack back on, and, uh, well, it snowed, but it looks like it's melting a little bit, so we might be able to take it out. Now, the sound kits are not waterproof, and I don't even think they're water resistant, so you need to be kind of careful when you're driving in adverse conditions that you don't get too much water up on here or you mount it in a place that you know it's not going to get damp or uh, wet at all because uh, yeah not water resistant definitely not waterproof uh, no water so let me get the lights bolted into the cab like I said we'll finish updating it and then uh, we'll get out in the garage and we might cruise around in the driveway a little bit with it.